Good morning. Welcome to Green Lake Church. I'm so glad you can join us for worship this morning uh, via the means of electronics. We can link our hearts, our minds, and worship, uh, connect, with one another, connect with one another this way. So welcome. We're delighted you can join us for worship. Now to begin our worship service, our Minister of Music, Wanda Griffiths, has our prelude. Good morning again. Welcome to Green Lake Church. I'm glad that you can join us for worship this morning. Um, hope that as we spend this time together, this worship together, as we focus our minds, our hearts on the good news that God has sent into the world through Jesus, we'll be connected with each other and we will 
find ourselves called and empowered for service among our neighbors, our co-workers, our friends. As we begin our service today, we'll start with birthdays, as is our custom. And let's start off by having Wanda give birthday greetings. Wanda? Yes, this morning I am giving birthday greetings to uh, Sally Moroa. Sally is one of our uh, youth, our young people, who is originally from Kenya and has been among us and mentored by several people in our congregation. So we wish you a very, very happy birthday, Sally. And also I am sending greetings to Keone Smith. Uh, Keone is one of the people that I have became uh, acquainted with earlier on in my time here because of his brother, Kimo Smith, who is an organist in Southern California. And so uh, he's well known in that area and has come up and played a concert. Uh, but I've really appreciated getting to know Keone and Nola Jean. And of course, this is a difficult time for everybody, but also we're going to be holding Nola Jean in our thoughts um, as she's continuing to have some health concerns, but wishing you somehow, Keone, to have a wonderful birthday this week. That's all from my birthdays. Thanks, Wanda. Yes. All right. Um, Steve Vara. Happy birthday, Steve. Um, Boy, I miss seeing you around the church. Uh, I've seen you on Zoom, I think, a time or two. And uh, so, Steve, happy birthday to you and, and hope that the coming year is a better one for all of us and especially for you. Uh, let's see, Juanita Sosong, happy birthday, Juanita. All the best to you. And also, Brandon Steinman, if I'm not mistaken, Brandon, you have moved down to somewhere in Oregon, but still we are able to be connected electronically. Happy birthday, Brandon. And uh, Gabriel Graves, happy birthday to you, Gabriel. My, you're getting big. All the best to you in the year to come. And now uh, I wanna turn our attention to uh, something that's happening tomorrow, Sunday, December 27th. Um, even during time of COVID, people get hungry. And even during time of COVID, there are people who need help with food. And so we are our regular monthly uh, service tomorrow afternoon uh, at uh, 4.30 p.m. at the Lamb of God Lutheran Church in Lake City. Uh, we'll be providing our community meal. If you would like to help out, please get in touch with Selena. Uh, let her know what you can bring and how you can help. Um, I know Charlene and Violet shared with us last week their experience in helping out and what a wonderful time it was. It's been um, I don't know, several months since I've been there, uh, but uh, great service to people who need it. And if you can help out, get in touch with Selena. That'd be wonderful. Um, we're at the end of the year, so I wanna talk a little bit about money. Uh, as most of you will recall, we have had a wonderful opportunity, a, a generous challenge. A couple of Green Lake families have put up uh, $75,000 in a challenge grant for the church. They will match dollar for dollar every dollar that the rest of us can raise to help pay down the mortgage on the Jensen house, which is the sort of the, the cornerstone of our housing ministry. Uh, we, we have $21,000 left to raise to meet that challenge. So $75,000 was put up if I'm doing my math off the top of my head real quickly, about $49,000 has come in. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your generosity. And there's another $21,000 left to raise to match this challenge grant. So if you're able to help out, uh, that would be wonderful. Um, this is not an emergency, but it is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for us. And so if you're able to participate in that, when you go to the online giving, just look for Jensen House uh, and, and you can make your donation there. Thank you so much for your generosity. And of course, you could also write a check and mail it to the church. If you're wanting uh, to uh, have a receipt that's dated in uh, 2020, we, your, your, uh, your, your um, letter has to be postmarked. I think I've got this right by December 31. If you're hand delivering it, it has to be in the church building. 
before the end of uh, December 31. Uh, you know, we can't backdate receipts. We have to use actual dates. Uh, of course, if you're doing it online, you just got to beat that midnight December 31 deadline. All right. Now I want to give some thanks and Wanda is going to, to develop it further. I'm just reflecting back on our candlelight Christmas concert that we had a week ago. It was such a wonderful, rich experience. And again, I just want to underline from, from where I sit, I had some small parts in it. You know, I was assigned to do this and do that, and I did those. But it was watching the incredible amount of work put in by both the musicians and the technical staff that just blew my mind. You know, I, I don't know how many hours, I don't know how a person would estimate the number of human hours that went into creating that wonderful concert. I'll leave it to Wanda to talk about how many uh, people have viewed it, but let's just say a lot more people have viewed it online than we're ever able to attend in person. So while we missed being together in person, and that really is a deprivation, part of the magic of the event is being together both in the concert and for the refreshments and conversation afterwards. We miss that. But it was a marvelous performance, bringing us together in our hearts and spirits around the, the birth of Jesus, remembering that, celebrating that. So to all of you who helped make it happen, thank you so much. Wanda, I know you and Charlene, you were kind of grand masters of, of organizing this and pulling everything together. Uh, I don't know how to thank you enough, Wanda. And I know you're going to share with us a little bit more about some of the work that went into it. So Wanda, thanks for sharing with us. So thank you, John. Yes, there were so many people that were doing so many things. It's, I can't list them all. Uh, as you said, Charlene was doing a great deal of work as the worship division chair organizing and being the project manager really for the overall project. Um, I let her know early on, I can do these parts. I don't have time to deal with these parts. And she's okay, you know, and she just took them. Um, I wanted to share that the vision of the readings all happening in the chapel, I believe that was Gumi's vision. And that was such a wonderful touch to have that uh, really a set there in the chapel with the decorated tree and he brought his special lighting and all his cameras and his microphones and uh, so that all of the readings and the prayers and John's message were seen in the same space even though they were they were all recorded several weeks apart uh, all of these recordings started in October uh, and worked right up there I think the children the junior choir were working on their piece this summer um, I'm so grateful to Alex and to Shelley, Alex Gajou and Shelley Lagrone for uh, marshalling their musicians and it's a challenging time with students in school and they're in online uh, classes and, and getting the communications going to turn in their music, to get them what they need to do to turn in their music. Um, every person who recorded had to have a recording that would allow them to sing along or play along on their own part or on the overall music. And so that process has to start weeks and weeks before the actual recordings need to be made. But I do want to lift up, as I have before, Gumi Ibsen. Um, among my colleagues, I shared, um, my colleagues in, around the country, musicians, I shared the link and everyone who has watched it, and which is several of them said, oh my gosh, where did you find that videographer, that video editor? He is amazing. So your skills are legendary, Gumi, in terms of the magical touches that you added, the editing to keep um, what would normally be a bunch of singing heads, static singing heads. You, you did all sorts of creative stuff with that so that the editing matched the music. We were looking at different things, all the transitions. He covered up a uh, really awkward page turn that I did by mistake so that it didn't show up in the final video. There's so many details. And so um, there have been, as of Wednesday, there were over 1,200 views on YouTube of that concert. And of those views, of course, 
many of those would be several people watching in a in a home so we can't even begin to estimate how many have watched now granted someone could have tuned in for five or ten minutes and said ah oh, well i'll watch the rest of it later and it still counts that as a view so i do recognize that but the the response and the outreach has been phenomenal so thank you thank you thank you to everyone we're going to um figure out how much money we were able to raise for this for big brothers big sisters and we will keep you updated once we have that information so um that that is all for the concert now we have something else this morning um john is planning to retire and the day has finally arrived and so while we are very sad about that for so many reasons, we do have some options of things that we want to do. And Ken Fairchild has created a video to let you know about those options. So I'm going to ask uh, Gooey to go ahead and run Ken's video. Hi, everyone. I'm sure by now you all know that our pastor, John McClarty, is going to retire in a week, effective January 1st. The ministry of John and Karn has been a real blessing to this congregation, and we're going to miss them terribly. Now, at this point, I want to assure you we've done everything we can to prevent this retirement. But at this point, I think we're 0 for 50 in our lawsuit, so it's probably time to move on. We're, we have a team that's working with the conference, trying to identify a new pastor that's a difficult and oftentimes long process that could take many months. Now traditionally, when a pastor retires from Green Lake, we have a big party down in the fellowship hall. Variety show, musical acts, great food, but with the pandemic, we're not going to be able to do that this year, for now anyway. Instead, we're going to compile a farewell video and you can all tape yourselves on your cell phones saying goodbye to the McClarty's and uh, sending that in. And we're going to compile that into one video for them. There should have be an email going out from Tad explaining how to tape your farewell and how to send it in. Also, we always give a gift. And there's now a line item in Adventist Giving through the church website where you can do that, make a contribution to that. I think both the uh, contributions to the farewell video as well as the gift we're asking for January 26th. So I'm off to Mexico. I know, I know. And um, I hope everybody, I wish everybody a happy new year. 2021, it's gotta be better. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ken. Um, enjoy Mexico. We will we will think of you and enjoy your time with family there. Um, the music this morning, uh, two of the pieces are reprised from our concert. We have the orchestra who will be sharing O Holy Night uh, as the offertory music. And uh, also the Veni and Veni Emmanuel will be the candle lighting music. That's from the orchestra's concert, uh, Chip Davis recording, uh, arrangement of the recording. And then uh, the special music today um, is really the anthem, and we are reprising a Christmas blessing. Uh, this is the piece that um, the choir sang in the concert just before um, John's message. And I want to lift up the words to you a little bit so that you get them, um, you have a little pr preparation. They are the blessing that is done traditionally at the end of the nine lessons and carols service, a tradition that came out of England. And um, it's so important for this time that we remember these thoughts. So the text goes, May the joy of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, the worship of the wise men, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And then it goes on toward the end saying, And the blessing of God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always, and remain with you always. Amen. So now, on to the service.
Christ is born. Christ is born. The prophet promised, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name will be Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. The fruit of his reign will be everlasting justice. And the gospel says, Shepherds were out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. The angel said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy for all people. Today, in the city of David, a Savior is born, Christ the Lord, and this will be your sign. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Then a vast choir of angels appeared, praising God and singing, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. The prophet promised, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. The gospel says, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, 
Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for the child in her womb is conceived of the Holy Spirit. She will bring forth a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Thus was fulfilled the word of the prophet. The virgin will be with child and bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. A prophet said, a star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel. The gospel says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When these wise men finally found their way, they entered the house, and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they fell down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Christ is born. God is with us. And now, let me offer an invocation here as we end this year and I end my time as pastor of Green Lake Church. Once more, let me invite God's presence among us. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mother of Rahab, Tamar, and Ruth, father of all mankind and of Jesus, thank you for calling us into your presence this morning and welcoming us with your smile. As we move into the new year, may the inspiration of this season, the inspiration of compassion and generosity of gift giving, may it suffuse our being and shape our lives. As we pray for you to come, as we pray for you to break into our world and intervene, may we also add our efforts to create goodwill and peace. Amen. And now I think it's time for our morning hymn.
Good morning, Green Lake Church. I wish we were in that fine uh, structure that sits on the lake of something called Green Lake. But as second best, we're here this morning together digitally, and I wanted to give you a report on what the offering is about this morning. It's something called the Local Conference Advance, and it's a, an offering that goes to the conference that so we can uh, do things together as a grouping of churches that we can't do individually. Here are some of the things that the Conference Advance offering supports. The Conference uh, Advance offerings support things like Sunset Youth Camp for the summer, like uh, our secondary school, Auburn Academy, like our union paper, The Gleaner, like our uh, primary schools, like our own Cypress School, and uh, evangelism and a number of other things. So to all those who can contribute this morning, thank you so much for your generosity. And let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, thank you for the work of the conference and the use of your funds through conference advance for our summer youth camp and our schools and our papers and our evangelism. In Jesus' name, amen.
Today is the day after Christmas, December 26th, and already we are starting to think about the next holiday we are going to celebrate, New Year's Day. Now it's a big tradition every year, the week before the, uh, New Year's Day, that we think about what has changed and occurred in the past year and what things might we want to do differently in the coming year. A good example of how this is part of our general culture is this magazine that recently came to our mailbox. You can see, <clears throat> this is from Stanford University, and it says 21 ways your life will be different in 2021, or maybe not. Because there were so many changes in 2020, and some of them are drawn on the cover. You see, for example, the hotels for rent, meaning people aren't traveling. You see people trying to kiss wearing masks. You see people ice skating on the, on the ice skating rink. And uh, they're all socially distanced, at least six feet apart from each other. And even the ice skaters or the ballerinas, not sure which it is, performing on the uh, computer screen, are wearing face shields. So the coronavirus gave us a lot of changes this year. And today we're gonna to be talking about what kinds of things we can do to cope better with change. I imagine most of you have gotten used to going to school and seeing your teacher on a computer screen. And many of you have gotten used to going to the store wearing a mask. And you've also learned that you can't just have your friends over for birthday parties. Instead, you have drive-bys where people come by and you hand them a little snack and they wave to you, but you can't hug people anymore. These are all huge changes that nobody would have expected a year ago. So I'd like to think today, how, how was Christmas different, for example, this year? If I could show you what was underneath my Christmas tree on Christmas Day, it would have been all packages that looked like this. Because we're away from our family for Christmas this year. We're not going to see our grandchildren, but we might visit with them on Zoom. And maybe that's what some of you have had to do with your grandparents. I want to talk today about an experience that happened at Christmas quite a few years ago when I was still a very young person. And I had a friend whose name was Bruce, who told us a really wonderful story about his grandfather. Now his grandfather would be at least 130 years old if he were still alive today. So his grandfather was born before 1900, and in his lifetime he saw a lot of changes. My grandfather wasn't quite that old because he was born in 1900, but he used to tell me how amazed he was that he had in his lifetime seen things change like the development of the automobile, and radio was invented in his lifetime, and the changeover from gas light or candles to electric lights, and telephones all happened. He saw these things happen, and he saw airplanes develop in his lifetime. Well, Bruce's grandfather was old, and he, he may have come from a European country like Denmark. I'm not sure exactly, but <clears throat> he took a long time to change his thinking about some of the new changes he came to experience. One of the big changes he had trouble with was television. He did not think it was possible to see people on the television and they couldn't see you back. I suppose he thought it was like a telephone conversation where <clears throat> if you were hearing somebody on the other line, then they must be able to hear you from your end. But uh, his children tried to persuade him and say, no, Grandpa, it's not like a telephone. It's more like a radio where you can hear them, but they can't hear you. They almost had Grandfather convinced that people on the television couldn't see him until one Christmas they were all together for Christmas Day and they had a big celebration in their house and they had opened all the gifts under the tree together and they settled down to watch a favorite program on television that was very popular in the 1950s. It was called the Tennessee Ernie Ford Show. And Tennessee Ernie Ford was a kind of a jolly master of ceremonies who sometimes sang songs and almost always kidded his audience a little bit. And Tennessee Ernie Ford got on the television on Christmas night and he looked straight into the camera and the people at home heard him say, just look at that mess all over your living room floor. There's boxes open and there's ripped paper and colored ribbons and toys scattered everywhere. How can you live with such a mess? Grandfather heard Tennessee Ernie Ford say that and he could never be convinced that the television couldn't see him. Now, maybe for some of you, this is kind of an imaginary problem because you know that today you can get on your computer 
and pull up Skype or Zoom and the people on the other end can see you. But you've all seen that is a difference, a change between just watching television and communicating over the internet with somebody you want to see on a camera. So that is a change that we've all seen very recently, isn't it? <clears throat> so I'd like you to think about, well, some of the big changes that are going to come in the next year. I didn't always like changes when I was a child. Do you always like getting a new different teacher at the beginning of the year? I didn't always like that. One time I had a teacher I really liked and she left school in the middle of the year to have a baby. And we got a substitute teacher who actually I liked better than the first teacher. And when I got to be a teacher myself, I learned that every year or two I got a new principal. So a different person was coming to visit my classes and write up an evaluation of whether or not I was a good teacher. That isn't always easy. It's kind of like having a different person grade your tests every time you get tested. So changes are something we have to learn to expect and think about ahead of time, which is kind of what that cover of Stanford Magazine was asking us to do. How many changes are you ready to take on? And maybe you don't want things to change too much in the next year. One of the big changes that we're going to have to deal with is this is the last day our pastor, John McClarty, is going to be our pastor. So we're going to have a period of time where we have different people from the congregation helping out, doing some of the pastor's duties, even preaching. Pastor McClarty might still be living in the area. He may come and spend some time with us, but it's not going to be his responsibility to be our pastor any longer. And we will be looking for a new pastor. So that's going to be a big change for our church just like a change from going to church and seeing each other and singing hymns together has become going to church over the internet. So there will be more changes for us next year. We know that. Now, how do we deal with such changes? Some things that can help us is to think about the parts of life that don't change. I can still take a shower, wash my hair, have a nourishing breakfast. Might not be as easy to get the groceries. Um, <clears throat> I don't have to dress up as much. Maybe that's kind of a nice change. But some things about the whole world don't change. I went outside this morning and I picked something from the grapefruit tree in my yard. This beautiful ruby red grapefruit. It's a really nice big one. You know, it's about almost you know, it's the size of a big softball. And then I went and picked a lemon. And then I went to pick a tangerine. All three of these trees are growing in my little yard here in Southern California. And I love this fruit. And one of the reasons I come here for the winter instead of staying in Bellevue. is not just the sunshine, but I love this wonderful fruit. Now, there's no way this grapefruit tree is going to start giving me lemons. It's always going to give me grapefruit trees. There's no way the lemon tree is going to start giving me oranges. And there's no way the tangerine tree is going to suddenly decide it's going to give me grapefruit. When God created the world, he made some things very stable. And one of the things that doesn't change is that plants grow continuously, just like you grow continuously. Maybe your parents make little marks on the wall so you can see the line so that as you get taller, you get convinced that, yeah, you have grown even though you can't feel it or even see it overnight. So lots of things do change, but there's something consistent about the idea that you grow and to, to you get to a certain height and you stop growing. And there's something consistent about knowing that one tree is always going to give us grapefruit. Now that kind of consistent stability where things don't change is one of the gifts from God who created the earth with a certain kind of stability. The rocks sometimes change, but they really don't change a whole lot. And it takes a very long time for a rock to erode into particles of sand. And the stars in the sky may move around but they don't change real fast either. So we don't see them as changing. And the Bible tells us that God changes not and that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if the coming year brings you a lot of changes or even some new changes you weren't expecting, remind yourself that God is there to be the part of your life that doesn't have to change a whole lot. Thank you and I hope you have a wonderful Happy New Year. Good morning again, Green Lake Church family. So it's time for prayer and let's pray together. Father God, 
as you know far more than we. Our degraded planet is subsumed under a vast pandemic that has touched every mountain, every valley, every plain, every nook, and we groan and we complain and we suffer from this plague. Our Green Lake community has not been untouched. As a result, our church family has now been disconnected and isolated for most of a year. Some of our family have succumbed to this virus. Others of our family have been left injured physically, emotionally, economically, and in other ways. So as we pray corporately this morning, during a time of destruction and death, we pray for our fellow humans as we all struggle through against this virus. We pray for wisdom for our leaders as we seek with them to minimize the damage on this question and on all the challenges of government. We pray for our church family here at Green Lake. We've listed several in our bulletin, some COVID related and others are not. We invite you to come close to us so that your wisdom and your caring becomes ours. Convert us through, though imperfect, to your instruments of healing, of peacemaking, of support, of caring. We pray for ourselves. We mourn the isolation, the missing touch, the loss of jobs and stability. We want that status quo ante. We want to meet again, learn about each other's needs again in space, laugh together again, celebrate together, eat together, pray and play together, plan for a better future of doing your work here at Green Lake Church together. We think again of this weekend, and while the temptations of the commercializations of Christmas are unrelenting, we ask that you remind us and remind us again of that true and pure meaning of Christmas, the reverie of that time when Emmanuel came to be with us, to walk with us, to live with us, to share with us, to set up that next phase of your exquisite rescue plan for us. So now bring us to you is our ultimate petition. May next Christmas be not Christmas in King County, but rather Christmas in the cosmos, a Green Lake gathering on galactic glass. Christmas with you again. In Christ we pray. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 32 through 37. Then King David ordered, Call Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah, son of Jehoda. When they came into the king's presence, the king said to them, Take Solomon and my officials down to Gihon Spring. Solomon is to ride on my own mule. There Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet are to anoint him king over Israel. Blow the ram's horn and shout, Long live King Solomon! Then escort him back here, and he will sit on my throne. He will succeed me as king, for I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and Judah. Amen, Benaiah son of Jehoda replied. May the Lord, the God of my Lord, the king, decree that it happen. And may the Lord be with Solomon as he has been with you, my Lord, the king. And may he make Solomon's reign even greater than yours.
Reading is from Luke 2, 25 through 32. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord, as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praising God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. May the Lord bless the hearing of the word. Merry Christmas, everybody, from us and some of the dogs. Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas Green Lake Church. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas Green Lake Church. Greetings from our family to yours, Maligayang Pasko. At manigong bagong taon sa inyong lahat. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's. Kuchut Parichit, Shilamul Tsan. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hira Yonwa, Yaoneli Sa Uta Wata. Hello, Green May! Feliz Navidad! Prospero Ano Nuevo! Bye! Claire de la Yol. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Green Lake Church! Merry Christmas! A blessed and Merry Christmas, everyone! Feliz Navidad! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas from the Boss family! Merry Christmas from Rainy Silverdale, from Jana and... Charlie! Merry Christmas to my church family! I miss all of you and hope you have many blessings in the coming year! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas!
So it's the day after Christmas. And in my imagination, I go back 2,000 years to the morning after the birth of the Christ child. Last night, the baby was born. The angels sang. The shepherds ran to find the child and then left spreading their story all over the neighborhood. Then hopefully, after all the excitement, Mary and Joseph got some sleep. I hope the baby let them sleep. Then came the next morning and life moved on. There were diapers to change. There was a schedule of nursing and sleeping to pay attention to. Cuddling, watching this baby, telling people about how cute the baby was, <laughs> hoping the baby would not get sick. Then a week later came the rite of circumcision. They were Jewish people after all, so there was that a week later. And about, then about six weeks later came the ceremony of purification. Mary and Joseph had to go to the temple for that. That was in Jerusalem a few miles away from Bethlehem. So they headed off to Jerusalem to do this special ceremony. And since they were poor, it was a, they had an offering of, of two doves or pigeons. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, there was a, a man named Simeon. He was an old man. And as uh, Sophia read for us, he was righteous and devout. He paid attention to his religious duties. He was good to his neighbors. He was a really good man. And somehow God had promised him that he would live to see the coming of the Messiah. When, when I think about Simeon, the, the Bible's description of him as this righteous man, this good man, and then the picture of the way he interacts with Christ's child when we come to that. I'm reminded of somebody I knew in the Akron Adventist Church many, many, many years ago. His name was Charlie McCullough. He had a special relationship with God. He often had conversations with God, whom he called the boss. He would tell me, well, I, was, I talked to the boss. Charlie was the kind of person that if there was an outdoor wedding uh, coming up, this afternoon and it's raining. Charlie would go and talk to the boss. And right when the wedding was supposed to start, the rain would stop, the wedding would happen. And once the bridal party got back inside the reception hall, then the rain would start again. And Charlie would not be surprised. He would say to me, well, what do you expect? <laughs> I imagine that's the kind of person that Simeon was. He had an extraordinary intimacy with God. Well, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit instructed him to go to the temple. So he was at the temple when Mary and Joseph came in with a baby to do uh, the ceremony of purification. They enlisted the help of a priest and they were involved in the ceremony when Simeon walked up. Did he introduce himself? Did he did he explain who he was? I, we don't know. What we know is that he came, he took the child in his arms, and then he, had, he said this, this blessing that we, we heard in our scripture reading. Almighty God, now I can die in peace. As you have promised, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is the light to reveal God to the nations, reveal God to the world. And he's the glory of your people, Israel. There was an old woman named Anna who was also in the temple at that time. She came up and joined Simeon. She was very old. Different translations put her age at either 84 or 84 years after she became a widow, which probably would have made her over 100. Um, she joined the conversation and then went and told people, he has been born, he's here. The thing that strikes me, two things strike me in this story. First, the excitement, the satisfaction, the, the joy of Simeon and Anna when they encountered this baby. For them, a whole life of longing finds a sort of 
ah, satisfied when they meet baby Jesus. But there's a second element in the story that strikes me. They were satisfied that they met Jesus, that they held Jesus, that they touched Jesus, that they saw Jesus. The longing of their entire life now is satisfied. At the same time, Simeon's words to the Holy Family made it clear that this was not the end. This was merely the beginning of the work of Messiah, the beginning of redemption. You know, from where we sit, we know that we have the ministry of Jesus and we know that his ministry, you know, was interrupted by a crucifixion and then a resurrection. And now 2,000 years of, of waiting for the second coming. Simeon, I don't know how much of that he foresaw, but he knew that this was just the beginning. But still, he said, it is enough. Lord, I can die now in peace. I have seen your Messiah. I have seen your salvation. Another element in this story that jumps out at me, in our translation uh, that we read today, Simeon says, you know, I have seen the Messiah. You know, God's Messiah has returned. But, but a more literal translation is, Simeon says, I have seen the consolation of Israel. And the thing that strikes me is the difference between his words there, the consolation of Israel, God is revealing his salvation to the whole world in this person, and say Mary's prayer. Mary, who was a, a poor young woman, her prayer focused on God has rescued me. God has lifted us up. Simeon's perspective is that of an old person whose, whose vision is much more encompassing. He was satisfied that he had seen the consolation of Israel. I imagine that Simeon was like Charlie. When he saw a young family with a sick baby, he felt their fear and anxiety. He worried with them. When he saw somebody you know, get injured at work, and then out of work and not able to pay rent, not able to buy groceries. He felt it. And he dreamed of a society where even those with bad luck or bad judgment could still live and still provide for their families. Simeon's dream, he wanted life to be better for all. He dreamed of the consolation of all Israel, not just rescuing him. And when he saw Jesus, he said, it is enough. This one will take us where I'm dreaming we will go. You know, for me, those words, I, I, Simeon's word, now I can go in peace. They echo in my heart when I think about leaving Green Lake Church. You know, the thing about this church that has been one of the things that's been most satisfying over the years that Karen and I have been here is watching the young people of this church. You know, they're, they are so amazing. And it's so fun to watch them grow up, watch them develop, watch them blossom. And I know that the world is, is going to be better because of their efforts, their engagement, their involvement. 50 years ago, I first experienced a call to ministry. I was a senior in high school. Forty years ago, Karn and I began our first pastoral assignment at the Babylon Church in Babylon, New York, on Long Island, east of New York City. When I went there, I was fresh out of seminary. I was full of book learning and youthful zeal. I knew everything. <laughs> but while I was there, the four years we were there at the Babylon Church, the saints in Babylon showed me what it really meant to be church. They knew how to do church. They knew how to run church boards and school boards. They knew how to do Sabbath school classes. They knew how to do Pathfinder clubs and youth meetings. They knew how to run a Dorcas society. More, more importantly, they, they cared for each other. Sometimes at great cost of time and convenience, they cared for each other. 
The Babylon Church was the first place in my life where I really experienced a community of black and white people together, where friendships simply went beyond the typical lines that separate us as Americans. The saints in Babylon taught me what it meant to be church and showed me how to be a pastor. Karen and I have served in three other uh, parishes since then before coming to Green Lake and eight years ago. In every one of these congregations, we witnessed the people of God. We learned from the people of God. We were cared for by the people of God. And then we came here to Green Lake. You have given us such a rich welcome. Karn and I often, when we're sitting together, we will talk about the amazing people of this congregation and what an honor and a privilege and pleasure it has been to be here with you. Um, when, I, when I sit with various boards and committees here at the church, I'm frequently amazed at the, the wisdom, the competence, the confidence, the, the willingness to serve that is demonstrated by so many in this community. When I think about leaving, I think about Simeon's words, Lord, I can depart in peace because I have seen the presence and wisdom and goodness of Jesus and the people of this congregation. And that wisdom and commitment and goodness will not leave with me. It will be here. The, the life of Green Lake Church will carry on, will move forward. There will be brighter days ahead. You know, we have a, a, a search committee that's working, and I'm confident with God's help that the search committee will find somebody whose, whose vision and vitality will help take the church into its new chapter, a new chapter, and do it well. Um, I also want to remind you that this coming week, the uh, Thursday email will have the nominating committee report, the first report from the nominating committee. Most of the current leaders uh, in, in the important functions of the church are continuing on, but there are some changes. And I hope that you will make yourself available to these leaders, the division chairs, the board chair, the head elder, um, and then, you know, the, the life of the church will go on and you will be the ones who will carry it forward with God's help and God's blessing. You know, at every stage in Jesus' life, from the time he was born, when he needed the manger provided by an innkeeper, to the time when he died, and he needed a rich man to provide him a place for burial. Throughout his life and ministry, Jesus depended on others, and he still does. He depends on us. And so as we enter the new year, I pray that you will continue to do what you have done so wonderfully over our last years, our last eight years here at Green Lake Church. Continue to be Jesus in this place. Let the Holy Spirit fill you, empower you, and guide you as you continue to be the family of Jesus, a beautiful example of the clan of Jesus with families scattered around the world. And now, Let's have our closing hymn.
let's pray together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for being with us for worship today. Uh, I hope that the holiday season continues to inspire you and bless you in the, uh, the week to come. I hope that you'll be back again next week, Sabbath school at 930 or 10, depending on which class that you are in, and then worship at 11. I hope you can join us. Thank you for being with us today. And now to end our service, here's our minister of music, Wanda Griffiths on the organ.